How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and yes, I did shower today at some point. Nope, I don't like this. I don't like this intro. I don't like any of this. Ah! How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and yes, my setup has changed a little bit. I got a few comments. You guys didn't like that you could hear the mic on the desk. I guess it was annoying. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully this new mount and stuff and this new desk and this whole new setup just looks a little bit better. Uh, let me know down below what you think if I... if something like dust my fucking eye let me know what you think down below today though we have a very interesting episode we are going to be taking a look at some tuner cars but we are only going to be looking at some american muscle i mean i did slide one jdm car in there but you'll see it is well worth it we're going to be taking a look at some crazy built cars we got some you know thousand plus horsepower builds some really crazy shit we want to see if they're asking a fair price for their build or if they're in a little bit too over their head when modding a car you never are going to get back what you put into it unless the car's value magically jumps up like crazy but realistically you don't expect to get it all back let's see if these guys have crazier expectations than most Let's go ahead and dive right in. Also, if you do see any posts like this, send it to my Gmail, drewpeacock.clips at gmail.com. Let's go dive right in. All right, first one. I've never seen this before, pending. It's a 2019 Ford Mustang GT Premium Coupe two-door, and he's asking $68,000. That's a whole lot of money. It, it, it ain't a GT350, it is simply a, a GT. But the first photo, few things catch my eye. We got beadlocks in the rear now. SoCal might have you thinking that beadlocks means that you're fast. A lot of cars in SoCal have beadlocks and they're like stock gap packs. He also has skinnies up front. And then uh, there's a big massive intercooler behind his GT500 style grill. I like that. It looks like, yeah, it is a 19. I was gonna say it is the, uh, the facelift uh, S550. The interior, it is manual, I think. It looks manual. I don't see paddles, but I see some other shit. May or may not, no, it says auto. Okay, it says auto. It just, it looked like that was a shifter boot, but I guess I'm wrong there. Carbon fiber steering wheel, boost gauges, other gauges, just, I don't know. I, that doesn't look like air fuel. I'm guessing boost and oil pressure. Those are your two most important ones. If you're not getting boost, something's wrong. If you're not getting oil pressure, something's really wrong. I'm usually not a huge fan of black cars. I, I usually think they look bland and a little basic, but this black on black with the satin black and then the gold highlights, I think, I think that pops. That's a perfect combination for this car. The lip, I mean, the lip might be a little much, but <laughs> when we see underneath the hood, I think we can forget about the lip. Also has a parachute. I already forgot about the lip. Screw seeing underneath the hood. Let's look underneath the car. We got rear mounted twin turb skis. Hopefully he's puts filters on them because that is awfully low to the floor. Perfect for sucking up leaves and snails and anything that happens to be on the road. Poor little kittens, you don't want to do that. Kitten going through a turbo, not a good day. He's got some, well, they look like Cerakoted or at least uh, ceramic coated headers. Somewhat built motor, I'm guessing. I mean, you gotta obviously do the oil pump gears on a Coyote, that's a given. Nope, looks like it's a fully built motor. $68,000, now let's see though. How much power is he making? A twin turbo built Coyote 2019, how much power? I'm guessing, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm guessing, 1200 i'll say 1200 he's invested over 135,000 into the build where i mean i don't know it's a 2019 ford mustang gt maybe if you include the sticker price you might oh it's fully loaded with a 54,000 dollars sticker okay that makes a little bit more sense car has a custom built motor rated for 1500 wheel horsepower that's pretty built minus 1500 i think crank that it can take so that's that's a pretty solid build he's got a rare fab built 10 r80 Driveline one drive shaft, 2000 horsepower axles, custom helium bottom mount turbo kit with custom 67R turbos. All right, let's see. We got to see the horsepower numbers. Does he not say? Oh, car has seen 28 PSI, roughly 1400 plus wheel horsepower and gone 3.9X to 3.5X, 60 to 130 on the street. Holy shit. Wow. I underrated his build by 200 horsepower. Holy shit. Okay, so a 1400 horsepower built Mustang. Is that worth 68,000? If he actually bought this car with a $54,000 sticker price, I'd say it's probably worth that. I'd say he can get around that area. It's not that old of a car. Yeah, it's gonna depreciate, but you're buying a modified car anyways. The depreciation is already a given. 
Uh, you're not buying this car because you want to buy something that's going to hold its value. You're buying this car because you want to go gap some little kids. So I'd say that's a that's a pretty solid price. Damn, that thing is sick. <laughs> that thing is fucking sick. If this were my car, I would have a few different maps on it because 1400 wheel horsepower. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of power. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't want to daily that. But let's move on to the next car. Next car is a 2006 Chevrolet Corvette Z06 Coupe. He's only asking 44,000, about 45,000. It has 57,000 miles. Automatic transmission once again. The 06, I believe, is the LS2. Let's take a look at what he's done to this bad boy. So first photo, I see a carbon fiber front lip. It looks like it's still on stock wheels. It's got a nice brake setup, but it's probably stock brakes. Um, the Z06, oh no, the Z06 is not an LS2. My bad, I was thinking Stingray. Oopsies. I already know someone, someone already typed it. You're so wrong. You have no idea what you're talking about. I forgot that it was a Z06. Relax. Anyways, the tinted taillights don't look too good. They look like you just sprayed Plasti Dip on them. I'm not a huge fan of that look. Um, also, do your exhaust tips not really like line up? Am I tripping? It might be an illusion. Carbon fiber little diffuser piece, I guess. He's on NT05Rs, which is a good tire, but depending on how much power he's making, I can't really see him hooking on that. It was awfully uh, kind of rubber bandish, if you ask me. It wasn't all that much meat. Um, let's see. Good brake setup. That's the thing, though. Corvette, like, right out of the box is like a solid platform. You go and throw a boost at it, and it'll take it. It's a good-looking car. Once again, another black car. Not my favorite. I think this one is a lot more bland than the one we just saw. But still, I mean, the Corvettes look good. C6s look good. I mean, some people don't like them because they're older, but, I mean, to me, it's a timeless look. Like, this is like the, the Corvette I kind of grew up with. And so I, I really like them. I think they're really cool. What the hell is going on here? Okay, first of all, is this your armrest? That's really annoying. I wouldn't want a bunch of buttons on my armrest. I also wouldn't want a display on my armrest either. I mean, I don't know about driving. I can't really see. Can't really see uh, my RPMs when, I, when it's down underneath my armpit. Can't really see that. Got a two-step button there. Also, just like a really awkward area, I feel like. You're driving. Do, 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 do. I want a two-step. Way back here. I, I don't really like all that. My two-step button in my Supra is right next to my shifter. So I press it, and then I can shift. And then I'm, I'm just back on the wheel. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Don't really like that. That, that kind of seemed like a flaw. Underneath the hood, okay, he's got a centrifugal supercharger. Looks like the Pro Charger logo. I think I see it there. I wonder which one it is. Um, I guess depending, I'm gonna try to guess just based on how much horsepower he says. I'll try to guess which one he has. These make good power, like these, especially Z06s. They don't need a whole lot of, of uh, pressure to make some serious numbers. So it's pretty solid, pretty solid setup. Um, I really don't like that center console, but let's take a look. It says 2006 Chevrolet Corvette Z06, thousand plus horsepower. Original block with new cylinder heads, new transmission, six-speed manual, new suspension, pro charger and intercooler, and radiator. It made 1,003 horsepower on the dyno. Okay, he didn't say what supercharger it was. I mean, it is a pro charger, but... I mean, I don't want to say it's a P-series. It's a pretty big belt. So... Or a pretty big uh, pulley. It doesn't look that small. So I, I don't think it's a P-series. Maybe an F-series. Maybe an F1A would be too overkill. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to say D series. Either way, though, 1,000 horsepower for only a measly 44,000. That doesn't sound like that all bad of a price, especially when just Z06s in general are going for kind of around 30, 40 grand. For a little bit more, you could buy a 1,000 horsepower one. Kind of seems like a bargain when you say it like that. I think that's a pretty solid price. Can't really complain there. Let's move on to the next car. Next car. Drew, you said it was American Muscle only. That's a fucking 89 Nissan. It is an 89 Nissan. Who doesn't like an 89 Nissan? The thing is though, this 89 Nissan has a American Muscle heart in it. The way God intended. I don't know what I'd rather have, an LS swapped Sylvia or a Jay-Z swapped Sylvia. Now we're talking, everyone does the RBs and there's nothing wrong with it, but change it up. All right, I'm seeing some things in this first photo that I don't like nitpicky of me i don't like this this hose clamp don't like it don't like how it's got a long tail get a better sized one or hide it i don't like that custom fab i'm guessing with like all of the intercooler piping uh is it twin turbo or single turbo i mean it's still a single turbo ls would be pretty solid especially in a tiny little shit box like this It'd be pretty solid now this guy is asking twenty nine thousand dollars it's a little high, but a lot of people masturbate to these cars, so you could probably get that. Uh, let's take a look at this photo. So this first photo, you see giant intercooler. It just fits perfectly in the grill of it. 
He's got the pop-up headlights. Uh, he's got some canards on it. He's got a wide body kit on it as well. I, oh, I was going to say, I can't imagine it's a drift car, but there's a Hydra right there. I mean, that's a crazy amount of power to drift with. Uh, it looks like, based on his description, it's making 600 horsepower, which is, I feel like that's more than enough. Like, in this car, 600 horsepower probably feels like 800 in a normal car, just because of how light it is. So, but whatever, this guy must be like a pro drifter, because that, that, that takes some serious gonads to go and do that shit with. Um, he's got a crazy diffuser. I liked all the heat wrap. That's very smart. He's got even, like, little heat sleeves around his uh, coil packs and stuff. So that, that's pretty cool. He's got an oil catch can. That's smart. If you want to read all of his specs right here, go for it. Um, I'm not going to read all this. The car is making 600 wheel horsepower. You know, I just want to know what turbo he has. Let's just look at that. It's a Garrett turbo. That's all he says. That wasn't helpful. Whatever. 600 horsepower drift machine Nissan 240SX for $29,000, $30,000. I personally think that's a little high. The only reason is, is like the only person that's going to buy this car and drift it is someone that knows what they're doing. And someone that knows what they're doing probably isn't going to buy this car and drift it. I mean, I, I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. It just seems like, I don't know. It's kind of out of my realm. I, I'm not a drifter, but uh, it just seems kind of like you would kind of want to build the car the way you want to build it and not, you know, have someone else build it because it's all about feel. Not saying it's not a good car. I just can't really see you getting 30 for it, especially when it's been listed for 24 weeks. That's a that's almost half a year. That is like half a year, right? Yeah, about half a year. Sick car, though, nevertheless. All right, here's the real Japanese car that we're going to look at. And the only reason why I tossed it into this video is it already sold. So it's probably going to be deleted shortly. So we'll just take a look at it really quick. Let's uh, see what this 94 Toyota Supra turbo liftback hatchback two-door is all about. He was only asking 50 grand. Seems kind of low in today's market for a turbo Supra. But let's see why. I mean, the first couple photos, it's got some really not too appealing uh, body kit kind of looks like a fourth gen camaro if you just cover you guys can't see my hand i don't know why i think you guys can but you can't i know you can't but if you just cover this part down right and then you just see from this part up looks like a fourth gen camaro 100 percent. it looks like he's on some te style wheels i don't think they are just because the center caps didn't look like the raised center caps I could be wrong. I mean, I guess we can zoom in or we can look at his description. The color, I like the color. I like blue. I'm a fan of it. But it seems like every OEM part that he swapped off, hood, bumper, fenders, everything, he chose an uglier version of it. And he didn't even replace the nasty chrome headlights. Like, those are the ugliest headlights, too. So um, it is a turbo car, supposedly, but it has NA brakes. Kind of sus. I mean, those don't look like TT brakes to me. But what do I know, right? I don't know anything about cars, obviously, right? Side skirt, I've never been a fan of that style. I don't like how it like bends on each other, on itself. There's also that style where it like dents in. I don't like that style either, um, but, but that's all personal taste. The little splats back here, that's fine. Don't really mind that. The OEM wing, I like that. He's got the uh, early tail lights, which makes sense because it is an earlier car. Uh, center exit exhaust, my bad, center exit ex exhaust, uh, single exit exhaust, um, of course, if you have a Supra, you gotta have an exhaust like that, yeah, the wheels definitely don't look like Volks, um, they look like straight up reps, and I know people are gonna say, oh, Drew, well, you got reps on your car, mine don't look exactly like what they're supposed to be looking like, you know, they just look similar, I, I don't think that's reps, but whatever. Yeah, uh, exterior-wise, not a huge fan of this car. The interior, I think, is really, really clean. Like, I like his steering wheel setup. I like how all of his panels are there. He doesn't have a cracked dash or anything. He's got his little A-pillar gauges. Like, it's very correct. Besides the little, you know, parking brake boot. It seems kind of out of place when everything else looks pretty legit. But overall, though, pretty solid. Uh, doesn't show underneath the hood, though. Very depressing. Um, might have to go and end my life after that, just because I couldn't see underneath the hood. Oh, I just noticed that, too. Oh, that's nasty. Sorry. He also painted this blue. It seems like he was starting to become a little bit of a ricer just by spray painting random shit. I'm glad you stopped after that. That that's that's plenty to ruin the car already. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever. But let's look at his uh, description really quick. He says he is throwing this up there to see if anyone local wants to grab it before he throws it up for auction on Monday. Uh, blah 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 blah. He's got 750 cc injectors. That's pretty small. Twin turbo water pump. Twin turbo head gasket. Upgraded spark plugs. GT45 turbo kit and intercooler. Okay, so is it? 
Is it an NA car or was it a turbo car? I have a feeling. I have a feeling, and I could be wrong, but based on the sp the the tachometer alone, based on this, I want to say it was an NA car. The reason being, I think the turbo cars, unless I'm thinking of the TRDs, I think the turbo cars go to 10K. It doesn't mean they rev to 10K, but they read out to 10K. This stops at eight. So I wanna say that this is a NA turbo, which is still okay, but that would also make sense why he only has 750cc injectors and why he's also listing that he's a twin turbo water pump and twin turbo head gasket. It kind of just seems like that makes sense. Again, it ain't the worst thing ever. At least it's turboed, but uh, that explains a lot. That explains why his price is only $50,000. Um, I'm, I'm betting someone offered him 40 something ish for it, which is still a good price. I mean, it's not a bad looking Supra. Um, I mean, it is kind of a bad looking Supra. Whatever. Not the worst thing ever. Tuner car. Crazy build. Not really. Interesting. Crazy to see that people are spending this kind of money for 400 horsepower. Yeah, that's, that's the world we live in. Moving on. All right, next car. We have a 2012 Ford Mustang GT. He's only asking $24,000. Is this the cheapest car of the episode? Yeah, it is. This is the cheapest car of the episode. Can he compete with the other top dogs though? We are about to find out. It has 117,000 miles on it. Ooh, that doesn't look so good. I don't know why I picked this car. Intercooler. Okay, didn't see that in the first one. Definitely didn't see that. I don't really like how he chopped his bumper. My bumper is falling apart. I did repair it, but it is sort of falling apart. And I've thought about doing something like this, but it looks like you like are missing a jaw. I don't know. It just it doesn't look right. Um, God, what kind of phone did this guy take these photos on? What is this Motorola? Okay. Controversial opinion. The white accents don't look horrible. They don't look horrible. Would I do it to my car? Probably not. But compared to the sticker bomb airbag cover, they don't look horrible. I see a gauge up here. I see a couple of gauges. So I'm, I mean, obviously with the intercooler, it's boosted. Does he show what he did? No. Bride seats in a Mustang? Interesting choice. Fire extinguisher where you really can't reach it? Makes sense. Yeah, that, that's a good one right there. Oh no, I'm on fire. I can't reach my fucking fire extinguisher behind me because I'm on fire. That makes sense. Good choice on that one. It's also just like a house fire extinguisher. It doesn't look like a car one. Could be wrong. Yeah, he doesn't He doesn't really explain much. I'd, I mean, 24,000. That might be fair. We don't know what it's boosted with. I mean, it looks like either a Pro Charger or a Turbo, just because that's an air-to-air -air intercooler, and most supercharger kits don't use that. So um, it's either a Pro Charger slash centrifugal supercharger or a uh, Turbo. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just kind of seems like it was tossed together. The ride height and everything is kind of also ugly. This one shouldn't have made it. Sorry. Last car. <laughs> Everyone runs their mouth till this bad boy pulls up to the race meet, right? 1967 Chevrolet Camaro, $110,000. The most expensive car of the episode. How much money is in this car? Hopefully he says. And also, I'm curious how much power it makes. So, this is a full-on drag car. It's a beautiful 1967 Camaro as well, which hurts my soul because... It's totally not a street car anymore, not whatsoever, but uh, the body on it is just so beautiful. Like, you just get a new hood, throw on some normal ass suspension and wheels, and cruise around town. Take off the big blower. God, this is such a beautiful car. Drew, you're a Mustang guy. You can't say that about Camaros. I like Camaros too, okay? The older ones. I don't like fifth gens. I'm cool with sixth gens. You know, we, we, we kind of cool on the weekends and shit. Um, fifth gens, nah, fourth gens, eh, third gens. I like third gens. Second gens? First gens. The things I would do for a first gen. Unspeakable. Anyways, $110,000. Giant stack carbs. He's got two of them too. Right on top of a supercharger. Giant ass belt. Ain't no belt slip happening there. No way in hell. God damn, this thing is so sick. Oh, it just sucks, though, because it's like... Oh, I mean, like, it looks like he's driving around town. Then again, yeah, I mean, this dude's at, like, Walmart right here. Is that Target back there? Is that Outback? Oh, dude, that's Chili's. That's Chili's. 
homeboy pulled up in the fucking race car to Chili's. What a mad lad. I like the car. God, I love the color. I love everything about this thing. Uh, can someone donate like $110,000 to me? I will daily drive this thing. Anyways, let, let's look. It's a streetable drag car with a 427 and a 1071 blower. Turnkey drag car, tubed, everything to bring out the kid in you. No free rides, please. Please disregard the features portion of this post. This was designed to go fast. Full halo cage. That chapstick is gone forever. Yeah, that's a that's a fucking sick ride. God damn. Parachute. Surprised there's no wheelie bar on this bad boy. God, this thing is badass. I'm trying to be like you, my boy. All right. Yeah, that's a good one to end on. I mean, one hundred ten thousand dollars. It's probably worth it. There's probably that. There's probably double that put into this thing easily. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know down below by telling me which car you would prefer out of these six. If I could choose, I'd probably take the Camaro. If not, I would take that one Mustang, the first one. Uh, that was a very clean build as well. This thing looks crazy, though. And you can never replace a classic Camaro with new cars. Uh. Anyways, guys, subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Until next video, peace.